Okay, uh, welcome to ProMongers, our third monthly meeting. And uh, this month we have two presentations. The first one will be uh, kind of a back to the basics uh, beca because we want to be a group that's not only open to those folks that have been using Pro a long time, but also for folks like you who are interested in Pro. And so, uh, so, yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, this first discussion, I intend for it to be more of a discussion rather than a presentation. I guess you'd say I've got slides, but we can talk about things. So, and then later we'll be learning about DBIX class from Dorn. So, <coughs> uh, Perl's functional functions. Uh, functional functions are functions that take, well, one definition of them would be functions that take a callback or that take a code reference as one of their parameters. And so <coughs> I wanted to look a little bit at some of the ones that Perl has, uh, grep, map, sort, and then the list utilities module is part of the Perl core. And so we can look also at some of the functional functions in that module as well, uh, such as first and reduce. Uh, Additionally, we can, if, we, there's a little, if there's time, we can also look at some of the more interesting functions in list more utils, which is uh, almost ubiquitous enough that it ought to be in core, but it isn't. Uh, it can be downloaded from CPAN. <coughs> uh, going back, have you used any of these functions already? No, okay. No. Grep uh, is a function that filters a list. You take, it takes its input, it passes it through, we'll, we'll, we'll look at how it works, but it passes it through a quote callback or through a subroutine. And based on the Boolean return value of that subroutine, it returns it's the elements that were passed into it into the output list. Map is to use to create or transform a list and sort, of course, sorts a list. Um, and then in list utilities, uh, first is like grep, but it returns the first item found instead of every item found that matches the criteria. And reduce is a way of summarizing a list, and we'll get into what those things mean. Uh, in list more utils, I kind of like sometimes any, which will return true if any element in the list matches the criteria, uh, and all, which will return true if all elements match. And pairwise is another cool one. <clears throat> so filtering a list, let's first do it kind of the hard way. Uh, we set up here a uh, my odds. We're setting up a variable to receive the uh, to, to receive the output. We set up a for each loop, and we're going to iterate over the members of that uh, quote word list. So we're going to each element. One element is a. One element is b. One c. One d. And one e. Uh, and then we're going to push into our. Did I say filtered? I meant to say odds. Push into filtered or odds. <coughs> uh, the We'll push into our, our odds, which this should say, uh, the topic, the it variable of the for each loop. So on the first iteration, this variable is set to A. On the second iteration, it's set to B, set to C, set to D, and set to E on each iteration. We're only going to do it if the ordinal value of that character is odd. So in, if, the, if the modulus operator returns, uh, returns a, uh, a value other than zero, so we're, what's that? Oh, okay, that's okay. So we're going to push onto our filtered output <coughs> one of the, any of these characters whose ordinal value or whose ASCII value is odd. And then at the end, we'll just go ahead and print them out, say for odds. So that's doing it the hard way. Now let's look at how, how we would do the same thing the easy way. Here's, for comparison, the hard way, the for each loop. Now we're going to use grep my odds equals grep and then here is the beginning of a code block and inside the code block the it variable again is being compared is going being run through ord and if it produces a value at mod 2 then we know that it's an odd and it will end up in this list and so this from here to here it's essentially a little subroutine and that subroutine on each iteration receives this, re receives in this variable, your A, your B, your C, D, or E, the items inside of that list. So does that make sense, what we're doing here? Okay, and then... use regular expressions in there. So yeah, yeah, you can use power. regular expressions, boole anything that will produce a Boolean value of some sort, which is essentially everything, because everything that produces a return value is either going to be true or false in Perl. <coughs> and then again, safer odds. 
So much more succinct, much easier to look at and immediately kind of know what's happening. And sometimes the uh, spacing makes things a little difficult, so let's just look at it all on one line. My odds equals grep. Here's our Boolean expression. Anytime this returns true, which will be when, when we're looking at an odd valued uh, character, then we'll pass it in. And I think that would actually be B and D. I don't remember the ASCII values, but I think that would be B and D. <coughs> A, C, and E, would it? Yeah. A is 65 or something yes. like that? Okay. A, or no, it, 65 and uppercase, right? Oh, yeah. 97. 97. Okay, so A, C, and E. Okay. Now, let's play a little trick instead. We want to know, instead of, instead of asking which, which characters are odds, A, C, and E, now, or, or, or have odd ordinal values, let's look instead at which indices, which indexes from this little list here, starting at 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, which indexes produce odds in their ordinal value. So instead of iterating over the list itself, we're going to put the list into a variable, into, a, into an array, and now we're going to iterate over the, index, over the indexes, over the indices, from 0 to the top index, which in this one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, uh, 0 through 8 essentially. Um, so here, the ordinal value, the index is what gets pl placed into the it variable, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 through 8. Uh, we look up what character that's associated with, A, C, F, B, whatever. If that character has an odd ordinal value, then it gets, then that index gets pushed into grep. And so the thing to remember is that grep returns what is in here based on the Boolean value of what is in its code block. It's a filter. Now we would have a list of indexes, essentially, that we could use to, to look up those characters. So grep, kind of a, uh, a summary of it. List B equals grep code block list A. Inside, uh, inside code block, the it variable is it. That is the element that is being iterated over, and it gets that that little subroutine gets called again and again. The code block gets called again and again for each item in list A. If the code block's return value is true, it's then then the element that's in the it variable gets pushed into your list, your your return value. Uh, as with for each, the it, var it variable is an alias, and so if you were to modify your it variable inside of your grep, then you've just uh, clobbered your list here, so you have to be careful about that. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing it intentionally, at least in the case of grep. Uh, let's see, list A and list B don't have to be arrays. They can just be, you can take a list instead of an array and you can return a list straight into another function. You don't need an intermediate variable or an array or a container. And simple expressions may be used in place of the code block, and I'll show you that in a second. One other thing I should mention is that what does grep return if you use it in scalar context? Context. The number of things filtered. The number of things filtered. Not the first thing filtered, but the number of things filtered. So if, the, if back here, if back here we find one, two, three, four, five items that, are, that produce odds, if we had used that, if we had used grep in scalar context, then the return value would have been, odd, would have been five. <coughs> Simple expressions can be used in place of a code block. So if, uh, your, if your Boolean is just a single simple expression that doesn't require any extra, uh, just one statement, one expression, then you can go ahead and just use it without putting a code block around it, remembering to put a, a comma between it and the uh, list that's being passed in. Uh, here's another example. Uh, if the it variable equals one, then, then we've got a Boolean true. Uh, uh, you can do that also without a code block, just don't forget the comma. Transforming a list. Now we're going to look at a, at a different topic, moving on from grep. Any questions? No? Anybody? Okay. Anybody, anything you want to talk about? Uh, okay, now we're going to create a little subroutine called characters to ords. This subroutine is going to simply return a list of ordinal values for each of the uh, characters passed in in, in the uh, subroutine's topic variable or uh, parameter variable. I should have unpacked it, but who cares? Uh, okay, so for each variable in the topic variable, or for each item in the topic list, 
uh, we're going to push onto ORDS the ordinal value, the ordinal value, and then we're going to return ORDS. And so then to use that subroutine, my ORD values equals cares to ORDS, and then a list of variables. Okay, so that's the hard way to do it. Now we'll look at the easy way using map. And you can see how much how much typing we've saved, and for every line of code we eliminate, we probably, hopefully, eliminate some bugs along the way as well. My ordinals equals map ord. You don't even need the it variable because ord automatically defaults to using that it variable. Quote word a b c d e. So now this simply produces all of this. And why did I use a subroutine instead of simply just doing a for each? There's a reason, and that's that. To, to here I wanted to replicate the behavior of this code block. Within this code block, you can't use last, you can't use continue, you can't use next. I guess there isn't a continue, but last, next. Uh, you can't use those. You can only use a return, and you can't really even use a return. I, I guess you can use a return in map, but, uh, but the point is that uh, you also can't use last or next in a subroutine, and so I used that subroutine just to, uh, just to layer those semantics into this solution that would be similar to what you get in the map. So, so again, map is going to call this code block on every element in this list. So there's the same thing again, just with just easier to read. Uh, lists don't again, lists don't have to be arrays. Here we're going straight from a list, transforming it with map, and then printing it out. There's no intermediate variable. There's no array container. Uh, and so here's kind of a summary again. List B equals map code block list A. Inside the code block, this is it. Uh, the, code blocks the, the code block's return value is appended to B. Now with grep, what gets appended to B is the item in list A if this Boolean is true. With map, what gets passed to list B is this value transformed by this code block straight in. Uh, as with for each, the it variable is an alias, so you want to make sure that unless you want spooky action at a distance, you don't modify your it variable. Uh, list B and list A don't need to be arrays. The code block is a subroutine, so again, no last, no next. Uh, and you can skip the, ter the current iteration if you would prefer not to add the current element into your uh, output list. You can skip the current iteration by returning an, an empty list, parentheses. So here's an example uh, without using a code block. Say for map ord, quote word A, B, C, D, E. We don't even need to put the it variable because ord automatically uses the uh, topic variable, the it variable. Don't forget the comma when you're not using code blocks. Uh, chaining is legal and even encouraged. Anybody recognize this idiom? <laughs> Everybody should. This is the short C in transform. So here we're taking your list A, B, C, D, and E, and we're going to we're going to break it out into little miniature arrays. We're now this map is creating a series is creating a list of lists, uh, um, an array of arrays, and inside of that, each each of the elements in the subarrays is going to contain the the original value A, and also the ordinal value of the of the fold case, which is essentially like lowercase but uh, but Unicode safe. Uh, version of this character. And now we're going to sort based on the first element, or the, the, the one-th element, which is the second element actually, uh, based on the numeric value of the ordinal, the numeric ordinal value uh, of the fold case. And then in the end, we don't need this fold case stuff. We've already got our sorted list, and so map is going to take the output of sort feed it right back in and drop the second part of the array right off and leave you with just the it variable again and then go ahead and print it out. And we've done all that without any intermediate variables or any intermediate array containers. So again, what's happening? This is being fed into map. Map is producing a bunch of little miniature arrays, a little data structure. Then it's feeding those arrays into this sort. The sort is sorting based on the second element in each array. And then it's dropping that second element and returning your original list in sorted order based on the fold case. And in this case, it's not doing anything because the list is already sorted. So, and there's nothing to fold. Okay, sort. So I, I kind of snuck sort in there. Sort is another one of Perl's functional functions. 
uh, in its simplest form, you can sort numerically. Unsorted feeds into sort, sort sorts numerically, and feeds into your sorted list. Uh, here we're doing a numeric comparison. Compare each element of each A element to each B element. Uh, so there's a numeric comparison. Here's a that one ain't gonna do anything. <laughs> the A, the B. Oh yeah, B. B that's a typo. Uh, I meant to say B A because we're we're reversing the list. Thank you for catching that. As you can see, I didn't test these. <laughs> uh, a and B means you're going to sort the list in ascending order. B and A, which is that should be, means you're going to sort the list in descending order. Uh, here you're going to sort the list uh, alphabetic or ASCII-betically instead of numerically. And here you're going to sort the list ascii or numerically, and then if that ends up being equal, then you're going to check and see if they are also equal as strings and sort that way. So each, again, each one of these, you're taking your unsorted list, you're feeding it into this subroutine that's called again and again as a comp comparison. In C++, you would call it a comparator, and I don't know what you would call it in Java, but, uh, but you're basically feeding your unsorted list into this comparator each time that the list, for each comparison that needs to happen, this comparator is being called, and then sort feeds it back into your uh, sorted data, your sorted output. Uh, so what does list utils provide us? It provides us a bunch of functions, but some of the ones that are most interesting are the first. First is like grep, except that it stops as soon as it's found the first Boolean positive, the, for the first hit. So we want to see if there is a kaboom in haystack, and if there is, then we'll, then we'll just return that one. Actually, that shouldn't be a ver uh, an array, that should be a scalar, yeah. Uh, and it stops, so this is a, uh, grep is a uh, in big O notation it's it's big O uh, N it's a linear algorithm first is also a linear algorithm but it's optimized to stop once it finds one element that's that's positive or that's true and it and it returns that element itself uh, reduce is one of the coolest ones in list ut in list utils and it doesn't get a lot of attention for each pair let's say we're for each iteration we're going to take the first element put it into A, and then the second element, and put it into B, and then we're going to hold on to the, we're going to hold on to whatever the return value is here, and make that A on the second iteration, and then grab another element from, from numbers, and make that B. Does that make sense? So, first, one more time, first iteration, A gets, gets element 0 and 1, but on the second iteration, A gets whatever this outcome was the first time around, plus one more element from numbers. And it reduces that all to one value. And so uh, list utils also contains a sum function, but you don't really need it because it can be reproduced simply with reduce. Uh, here's another max can be reproduced with reduce again. A is greater than B. If it is, then return A, otherwise return B. Hang on to that return value and then compare it again against the next number that comes through. So. Reduce is really cool. You can use it for a lot of things. Uh, now we'll look at list more utils. This one you have to get from CPAN. Uh, I don't think that there are very many Perl installs where somebody hasn't already grabbed it from CPAN, but uh, mm -hmm. because it's pretty useful and every module you install probably uses list utils somewhere along the way. So, okay, it has a function any. Uh, now instead of first, we want to know simply if uh, we just simply want a boolean yes or no. Is there any food that that matches quiche? And if so, then return that. Then return a, a a boolean positive. So here we're not returning the elements, the element itself. We're just returning a one if any of them match. As soon as one is found, then it short circuits and stops. And so it's pretty efficient as far as linear searches go. Actually, um, if you don't have list more utils, you can actually use map to assign one to all the elements, pop that into a, a hash, okay. and then you can use uh, basically a switch state oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to rip it out. That's cool. That's a good way to do it. Yeah. <coughs> um, there's also all, which checks to see. This one has to run through the entire list, and it's going to check to see if every single one of the elements in animals matches this Boolean. Uh, that shouldn't be an equals equals. That should be an uh, EQ. So if, if all of the variables are, uh, are unicorns, then it's all unicorns and it returns a positive, except in this case where we have a typo. Uh, pairwise is another cool one. This you is another... regex in there, can you? 
Yeah, you can use a reg. Um, I think you have to pass a code block. You could put a regex in the code block, but you do. Ha these ones uh, are written using Perl's prototypes, and I don't think that they allow you to 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 substitute just an expression for a code block. Now you could put just a simple. Ex well, this is a simple expression, but you could put a regex in st instead, and you don't have to uh, enumerate the it variable because a regex just defaults to underscore variable anyway. Uh, pairwise takes two arrays as input, allows you to do a transformation on those two arrays, whatever you want to do with them. The first array will yield the A variable on each iteration, and the second array will, will yield the B variable. And then whatever the outcome of this, of this computation here, or this code block here is, gets pushed into your return value. So uh, his and her incomes, add them together, and now you have the joint incomes for example. That's pairwise, and I like that one. You have to sometimes put no warnings, uh, quote, once in here, because if you don't use A and B anywhere else, like in a sort routine, uh, then it'll trigger a warning. Uh, and then, okay, evens and odds. Okay, the part one is another one. I, I've, I don't use this one, and I really ought to, because it allows you to partition a, a long list into a bunch of smaller lists. And so, whatever the outcome of the code block is, that tells, uh, that tells part which element of its output list should, should receive the input list. And so what you end up with is a, bunch of, is a list of lists. You end up with a bunch of array refs. Each array ref contains, uh, in this case, it's only going to either be, uh, it's going to be, it's going to contain two array refs, and each array ref will contain, one of them will, will contain one, three, five, seven, nine, and the other one, two, four, six, eight, because it, it's com computing the index. This is basically a computation of what index belongs in, in the output. Uh, does that so make if sense? You, if, you, uh, if your code block said default scaler mod 3. Yeah, then you would get three array refs. refs. Yeah, okay. three, three array refs. So for every unique value that evaluates. Then it creates an index in, a, in, a, in an array. So you want to make sure that you're not returning zero some of the time and nine million other times, because then you'll create an array with two elements, one of the index zero and one of the index nine million. So uh, I wonder if you could use that to return to a, now it's going to, I was going to say you could maybe return to a hash, but you're still, well, inter intermediately you're if, creating if, a list. If you could parse a hash and then return to a hash. We'll have to, we'll have to try it, because I, I'm wondering if the intermediate list, well, it doesn't care. The list doesn't, doesn't have a context of I'm an array or anything like that, so that would probably work. Yeah. Right? It would be with part if you work on the key, right. key value, key value. Yeah. So that I, might not be a good I, I wonder if, you can use if the part. variable to arrow into your, your key value. I wonder if part requires that, it, that you return a number as opposed to a string. It doesn't really matter, though, if you're returning into a hash, right? Yeah. And I just use a numeric index in your hash. I'll have to play with it and try it and see. I, that's one I don't use often enough, and, and I ought to, because I, I use C++ a lot also, and it has a whole bunch of functions set up to partition uh, arrays, essentially. So I, sh I should be more familiar with it than I am. And then th this one I really like, n at a time n at a time, this many at a time. So we've got an alphabet A through Z. We want to get, we want to create an iterator, which is a, another callback function. This is a, this is, this iterator gets a code ref it, uh, plopped into it. We're going to create an iterator that, that runs through alphabet three at a time. So then in our while loop, my, my chars equals iterator, uh, we're going to run that little code ref. This is, this is uh, dereferencing the code ref running it. Now, on the first iteration of this while loop, you're going to get A, B, C. On the second iteration, you get the next three. On the third iteration, you get the next three, and so on until you're out. And if you have an incorrect number of elements, then the last element will only get one or two or however many are remaining. It doesn't throw out any warnings or anything. So that one's really cool and really useful. And there's, how many times are we, trying to, uh, are we trying to pull several items out of a list at once? Uh, but not, you know, and then be able to iterate and, and keep doing it again and again. And this All just makes it equal splice. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just why why do it that way when the, when this is so convenient? This is this is saying exactly what it's doing. So, uh, so list more utils contains a whole bunch of other functions, many more than you'd want to mention. Uh, but uh, so so check into its documentation and look it over because 
there are a lot of really interesting functions in there. Uh, people come up with creative ways to manipulate lists. And that's it. The slides are on SlideShare, and I'll get a corrected version uploaded now that we spotted some bugs. <laughs> I just did them quickly this afternoon. So that's it. Cool. Any questions, anyone? No? Okay.